Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for enjoying me to share my, to, to invite me to share my research with you today. So as been said, I'm, I'm Alana Kluskowiski, biologist by background, and I'm going to talk about um, the vertical farm uh, part of Fix Our Food program. And yeah, today I'm going to show you a little bit of the farm uh, that is located at Spark York. And, but I wanted to talk to you about farm, uh, a different type of farm, farm the, the, the way that um, we usually don't see it. Um, but a little bit of background for you to understand where uh, my point is. Um, so this is how the, the food system should look like. All parts of the food system should deliver um, a healthy people on a healthy planet um, uh, and considering a thriving economy. But as we may know, the food system is not doing this properly. But what is wrong with the, the food system? So um, the food system does feed many people, but it's not driving healthy people. And little progress has seen um, uh, on improving diets as well. So, for example, data f uh, from the, the Global Nutrition Report 2021 um, shows that, uh, as I seen, little progress has seen on improving diets, and globally, for example, only 2% um, of, uh, of fruits and vegetables, both critical components of our diet, has, has increased. And in the UK, they, they are um, under the target recommended daily. Um, um, also, diet-related disease uh, is, uh, is causing the, the, an impact on this unhealthy diet. So unhealthy diet impacts on our health, and for example, diet-related disease uh, are mainly cause, uh, a leading cause of uh, death and disability in the UK. Uh, if we look at these plots, we were healthier in 1950s than we are today, and there is a change in our wave over the last few decades with now uh, more than half of the population, if you see on the last plot, uh, um, more than half of the population with um, BMI that corresponds to overweight or obese. Also, our food system doesn't make uh, eating a healthy diet easy. You can see from this plot as well that um, healthy foods tend to cost more per calorie than unhealthy foods, so it costs more for us to be healthy. And also more money is spent uh, on marketing unhealthy foods. If you see from this chart, um, only 3% of, uh, of marketing is spent on uh, 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 is money is spent on marketing uh, fruits and vegetables, also food that we consistently uh, consume too little of. Um, also, the access of food is not equal. Um, most the private areas or poor neighborhoods have more fast food joints. But how um, we can help and tackle some of these issues? This is the work that colleagues and I, we do uh, at Grow It York, um, the indoor vertical farm um, located at Spark York. Spark is uh, a social enterprise uh, home for um, startups and also uh, public space, community space, outdoor community space that is located in the city center of York. Our vertical farm is located there. Uh, and Grow It York is part of Fix Our Food, uh, a multidisciplinary research program um, based at the University of York, but in collaboration with other universities across the UK. Uh, and Fix Our Food, uh, on Fix Our Food, we are researching how to improve, and how to make transformations on the food system uh, to one that is more uh, regenerative and uh, is looking at uh, uh, planetary health and human health. Um, Fix Our Food is funded by UK RI and uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, other research councils via uh, Transforming the UK Food System Strategic Priority Programme. And I want to talk a little bit about the technology that we use in the farm for you to understand why this farm is different from other uh, farming methods that I've, uh, I've mentioned in the beginning of the talk. So uh, in an indoor farm, we need 
three main things or three main components. One is the light, so uh, we need a light source. In this case, in our farm, we use uh, horticultural LED um, lights, which is developed by a company, um, a local company uh, located in Sherburn in Elmet. And the, the difference show of these lights is that um, uh, they are energy saving and they are also tunable, which means that we can um, tailor for each crop variety um, and to enhance uh, nutrition uh, and tailor uh, growing regimes as well. Secondly, we need a growing or um, um, a structure support for the plants to grow because usually in indoor farms, an example of our farm, we are soilless, we don't use soil. Instead of soil, we use these uh, recycled carpet mats uh, to give support for the plants to grow. And thirdly, we have uh, we need water and nutrients. So at Grow It York, we uh, plants are misted with a nutrient-heavy solution that is absorbed by uh, the root system through an aeroponics system. When I say aeroponics, uh, it uh, it means that we um, uh, we use atomizers, ultrasonic, uh, vibrating ultrasonically, that in this breaks the water into tiny, tiny droplets that uh, creates this mist that is absorbed by the plant's root system. And this makes the plant's roots um, moist and fed. And this is, um, um, this technology, aeroponics, is developed by um, a British company called Let Us Grow, which we collaborate with in, in our farm. Um, because the growing beds are not completely filled with water, roots are not completely submerged in the water all the time, and these, uh, the roots uh, have greater access to oxygen. Uh, this combination of factors makes also the upper part of the plant, as you can see on the scheme, is, um, it stays drier. And this combination of components makes the plants healthier and growing faster and producing more. So, but how uh, bioscience uh, and um, technology used in vertical farm can help tackle some of the issues on the food system or to improve the issues that we have on the food system. Um, we work with um, uh, different groups, uh, um, as you can see, uh, tosser seeds, vertically urban, and the list of, of uh, different groups in that. Some are seed breeders, technology suppliers, uh, hospitals, and uh, um, other farmers, and, um, and so uh, at Synap. Um, to improve crop varieties or to select crop varieties for, um, for indoor farming. As uh, Lito has seen on, on, on selecting varieties for indoor farming, we are working in this sense because it's very important on vertical farming, for example, two, um, two days shorter growth, for example, is a, a massive impact on, when you scale up on viability and profitability. So some of the research that we are conducting is um, in this case, just let me have a quick look here. Um, selecting best varieties, as I said, for uh, vertical farming, enhancing efficiency uh, on farming process as well, um, and improving the nutritional profile of the crops that we work in, in uh, we grow in the vertical farm. But what happens with the food that we grow in the farm? Um, uh, on another angle of the research, because we are still, uh, we are also uh, running uh, a business. Uh, we produce food for uh, the business at Spark. So as you can see, two of the business at Spark, um, supplying uh, fresh food for um, those restaurants. But we also uh, work with direct sales with the, pu the public via Too Good To Go Up. Um, and we work on maximizing our production, but also uh, we w what we ultimately want is to minimize waste, um, packaging, and uh, because we are producing food closer to consumers to reduce transportation with food as well, uh, li uh, linked to food. Um, on another angle of the, the research, uh, we engage with the local community, looking at the social impact of the farm. 
uh, we work with two food banks, so all the surplus of our production goes to these two food banks at the General Store at Spark York and the Red Tower in front of Waitrose in the city centre as well. Um, and what we want with these is uh, to engage and to explore, to work with these underrepresented communities to see how to improve the access of uh, leafy greens uh, and nutrition within these communities. Um, in the vertical farm, we also um, work on the education and interacting with the public. So uh, we work in many, uh, developing many public engagement events, uh, such as Great Yorkshire Show, as you can see on the first and second images. And last year, for example, we've um, developed with, together with the School of Art and Creative Technology of a virtual reality um, immersive experience of the farm that we brought for um, especially kids but also adults to uh, um, to immerse this themselves on, on uh, what is um, the vertical farm and what we do, how we grow things in, in this uh, sort of environment. But we also develop educational resources and one example is the Future Food Heroes which is um, primary school um, educational program that we brought to schools across Yorkshire, um, bringing aquaponics uh, into education. Um, in the beginning of the talk, I've mentioned a little bit about the human health uh, linked with the food system, and now I would like to discuss a little bit less from uh, local and more for a global pr perspective. Um, and uh, now we're talking about the environmental impact of, of our food system in, in the UK. So in the UK, uh, a fifth of our greenhouse gas emissions is linked to food and most of this, as you can see, is linked to production itself. So that's why it's really important for us to, um, um, to analyse and assess um, how we produce and consume food. Um, but how vertical farming movement can impact on climate change agenda? Um, uh, there is uh, so different ways that uh, w w we can impact, but mostly um, vertical farm uh, per se has uh, several benefits, and some of them are the water efficiency. In the farm, we use 95% less water. Um, as I mentioned, we are soilless. We don't use pesticides and just a little of fertilizers that plants need to grow. Um, we can grow more in less space as we stack um, the growing beds vertically. We repurpose spaces in cities especially. We produce food closer to consumers, reducing food miles and reducing food waste uh, due to transportation as well. Because we don't have the constraint of, of the seasons, we also can produce all year round. Uh, there is no runoff or chemicals, um, nutrient or chemicals runoff to waterways as well. And um, we free up land for carbon sequestration as we are repurposing the spaces and uh, 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 opportunity to potentially increase biodiversity as well. But always there is a drawback, so those are uh, several benefits, but we always have a drawback and in this case, because it's a controlled uh, environment agriculture, um, we um, use energy to control um, the light and the HVAC unit in the farm. And uh, what we uh, want with the farm is how the benefits can outweigh the disadvantages of vertical farming regarding uh, to the energy consumption. And finally, uh, what we want with this is uh, parting being in a business model, parting being uh, a business or, and parting being um, a research uh, facility. So what we want is to develop a viable business model that is not only looking at profit, but we are looking at the environment and looking at social impact as well uh, with all the things that we uh, research at the farm. Uh, and the idea is to scale up Grow It York to enable these community farms in other locations, in new locations. We are aiming for a social enterprise um, that we uh, are diversifying revenue stream by um, adding uh, 
uh, food tours to the farm and combining with uh, uh, monthly tours to the farm and food tours with uh, a local company in, in York as well. Um, also um, charging research facilities and selling to the public and uh, to restaurants as well. And what we ultimately want with this is improve accessibility of healthy food, especially with underrepresented communities working uh, massively on the social impact of vertical farming and how we can change uh, this and make changes, substantial changes on the food systems. So that's it for me. These are some of the people that couldn't come today, uh, but I would like to thank them working with us on the Fix Our Food and some of the collaborators of the farm. Um, if you want to go on our website, learn more from the work that we do, uh, and if you want to um, talk to me, send me a message, that is my email address on the screen. And thank you very much. <laughs>